So depending on who you ask, Pokemon is either dying or it's dead. I mean, I, I don't think it's dead yet. I really think Nintendo could probably recover from this. Well, really, Game Freak. Nintendo, believe it or not, has very little to do with Pokemon at this point. But, but the Pokemon Company and Game Freak, if they actually put some effort in, they could probably recover from this. And, you know, I should probably explain, you know, to any Gen 1ers that see this, or just people who don't really care about Pokemon, or, or I guess to the few of you who think Pokemon is doing just fine, and refuse to listen to reason, I'll try to explain briefly why people think Pokemon is dead. Well, the first reason, and I just want to, I just want to put out there, my emotional investment in Pokemon is pretty much gone at this point. I'm, I'm speaking, you know, as unbiased as I can on this because the last Pokemon game I played all the way through was X and Y. That was pretty much when I dipped out of the franchise. Honestly, you know, I was just tired of playing the same shit over and over again. You know, I played every generation up to six, so. Yeah, Sun and Moon didn't do it for me. I'll say that. I, I could elaborate on that, but let's let's get to the the main point. So, first off, the designs for Gen 8 are fucking horrible. Like, oh my god. This Gen 8 is like what Gen 1ers describe Gen 5 as, you know? Like, if you actually look at you know, all 150, however many Pokemon were added in Gen 5. Yeah, there's a few shitty ones, but there's a lot of damn good ones. Like, some great ones. Gen 5's awesome, if you ask me. But Gen 8, Jesus Christ, there's maybe a handful of decent designs in there. Almost all of them are shit. And, you know, I'm glad they carried over Alolan forms from Sun and Moon because that was like the only mechanic I actually liked from Sun Moon uh, but these ones are god-awful like Jesus Christ like okay I'll be honest I actually like Meowth Meowth's new form but Meowth already had a fucking Alolan form why does he have another form Mr. Mime looks fucking sh like shit just utter shit they actually finally added an ice and fire type combo ice and fire really how does that even possible that doesn't even fucking make sense. Oh yeah, and a form for Stunfisk? Stunfisk. Yeah, someone really fucking asked for that. Okay, so, you know, a few of these are actually not bad. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> okay, so, you know, the Galarian forms are probably the best part of it. Uh, but, okay, so, the biggest controversy, which I'm sure all of you heard about, was that, you know, they didn't bring back all the old Pokemon. This is the first time... That the Pokedex, the National Dex, wasn't complete. It didn't have every single Pokemon, right? And of course, people were like, "Oh, uh, what does that matter? Uh, do you even play the new games with the old Pokemon?" First of all, that wasn't the point. Part of the point was is that people actually transferred over their Pokemon from older generations to the new generation. There are people who've done that since Gen 3 because it was actually possible to transfer over Pokemon since Gen 3, and in the uh, download only like 3DS ports of like Gen 1 and I think Gen 2 as well, you could port those through the Pokemon Bank to new generations. So you could even take, you know, Gen 1, Gen 2, you know, originals over to the new generations. And of course, you could catch, you know, those old Pokemon in the new games in a lot of cases. Like you could catch almost all of them between the two versions. But the, the second problem, and this is, this is a huge fucking problem, it just shows how lazy, like, pathetically lazy Game Freak is, is that they basically recycled the shitty, lazy animations from these 3DS games to a full console to the Switch. Like, they treated the Switch like it was fucking, uh, you know, a DS or 3DS. And people have done animation comparisons of, like, Pokemon Stadium, um, Coliseum and XD, Battle Revolution, to uh, Sword and Shield, and it's fucking pathetic. Like, really? They're not even animated at all. It's the same fucking animation since X and Y, and they couldn't bring over the, the old Pokemon, and you know why they fucking did it. You know why they fucking did it, and they proved it with the fucking DLC that they released. 
they released DLC that not only had more new Pokemon, which is like a, a first, essentially, because I think they only have done forms, like new forms for legendaries and shit up until now. Um, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. But they also had a shit ton of the old Pokemon front, like, also in the DLC to fucking sell you the DLC. It's like, what a joke. What a fucking joke. They're trying to milk you dry, Pokemon fans. They are trying to milk you dry. Mil like, this is... It's not Nintendo's fault for once, even though Nintendo is definitely the kings of milking your nostalgia. They're essentially the Disney of the gaming industry at this point. But, you know, not as bad as Disney. Nintendo has some integrity. But they're just exploiting your nostalgia for Pokemon. You gotta let go. You know, I let go. I finally got bored of the same fucking battle system since, you know, I'll say since Gen 4, essentially, because Gen 4 is really where they perfected the battle system. So, fucking, really? There's, like, no innovation. They just add a new one-shot gimmick, you know? And Mega Evolution was the best one-shot gimmick because it was actually cool. Z-moves are fucking dumb. Dynamax is even more fucking dumb. Like, Jesus. It, the whole, like, Gigantamax transformation thing literally is just Mega Evolution but big. They've run out of ideas. It's really evident. Game Freak doesn't even want to fucking make Pokemon anymore. I'll probably have to verify this, and, you know, if I'm wrong, I'll put it in captions or something. But believe it or not, Game Freak's B team is what develops Pokemon. Their A team works on games that nobody really cares about, but at least they're new games. You know, like actual different franchises. And, you know, if you, if you want to know what I think the best Pokemon game is... Which you probably don't, but I'll tell you anyway. Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. That's the best Pokemon game. Hands down. Fucking fight me. I, I will argue that to death. XD is the best Pokemon game. Period. But anyway. So, since Pokemon's dead. Or dying. Or just in a very vulnerable state. We, we can put it that. That'll be my best euphemism. Now is the perfect time for a competitor. Right? And, obviously in the past there have been a lot of competitors a lot of a lot of different games anime whatever that have tried to take pokemon's throne and they've all failed essentially you know the only thing that managed to really compete with pokemon though only in the trading card space is Yu-Gi-Oh, and you know, i i definitely think Yu Gi Oh is superior to pokemon in the card game but that's not relevant anyway uh oh yeah another thing that was shitty about Gen 8 is a fucking permanent experience share that you can't turn off. It was bad enough that you were given it at like the beginning of Gen 7. And sure, yeah, you could turn it off. But they still give it to you. It's like giving you access to God mode. And just being like, oh, you know, but you could turn it off at any time. What, what the fuck? These games have always been easy. The only game, like probably Gen 1 is the only one that has any amount of challenge. And if you know how to break the combat system... I mean, it's it's still easy as shit. Like, the difficulty in these games have always been a joke. You know, they're for kids. You know, they're for kids. And the difficulty was fine for kids. For, like, you know, Gen 1 through 3 or 4. And then they just got easier and easier and easier for no fucking reason. Like, why? What? Why make it easier? Do you really think kids are that much shittier at video games or something? Or they just have no patience? So you just gotta make them so mindless and just baby easy, you know? Like, just knowing type weaknesses and, you know, resistances is like 90% of, like, the skill in, in, in the single player. You know, obviously, competitive Pokemon is different, but the point is, is, uh... The point is, a permanent experience share has made the new game so easy that these YouTubers who like to do these, like, challenge runs for games, you know, like Nuzlocks and things, but not just Nuzlocks, um, this guy, J, J Rose, he essentially beats Gen 1. He's trying to beat Gen 1 with, like, every single, uh, pre-evolved Pokemon, right? And he's doing it. He's succeeding just with that Pokemon, right? Gen 1, you know, the hardest one, essentially, probably, according to a lot of people, I don't, maybe most people, who knows, really, I don't care. The point is, is, 
He's beating it with one Pokemon, just one. And sometimes he's doing it without grinding. Like a lot of the time he's doing it without any amount of grinding whatsoever. One Pokemon, not evolved. Like, so all the people, all the fucking idiots who are like, uh, what, do you want to grind? You don't need to fucking grind unless you suck. You don't need to grind in Pokemon. Pokemon is not one of those RPGs you grind in. You just play all the way through, you fight all the trainers, explore all the areas and shit, and that's enough EXP to beat the Elite Four. Unless, you know, you're constantly swapping out your team, wasting, you know, all that valuable EXP. In which case, you brought it on yourself. I mean, that's, that's your fault. Fuck, man. Why do you even play Pokemon? Why? Literally just to capture nostalgia, that's it. It doesn't even capture the nostalgia anymore. Ever since they switched to 3D, I thought it would be a great, you know, leap forward. It really, it's not. Like, it took away some of the charm, honestly. Just because of the lack of any, any fucking real animation. Like, look at the idle animations since X and Y. They're so bad. They're so bad. And the problem is not 3D, obviously. Like, like I said, the Stadium, XD, Battle Revolution, they all had great idle animations. I'm assuming Genius Sorority got shut down, the, the old developer, for uh, those 3D games. Uh, you know, obviously I'll check on that. Regardless. So yeah, Pokemon's had a lot of competitors over the years. Uh, I'm just going to take a look at some of these. I played most of them, actually, because I've really wanted a Pokemon alternative forever. I mean, essentially, probably s at least 10 years, you know. I I've been looking for something to challenge Pokemon. And, you know, so a lot. Of most of these are Japanese games, obviously. I don't know why Western developers haven't tried to challenge it. I guess it's just there's no not enough money in it, I guess, even though Pokemon is... Probably one of the most lucrative franchises of all time. I don't know. They've, they've just never tried. Maybe it's not worth the effort to them. It's easier to just put loot boxes in every game. But but yeah, but of all the competitors I've played, there's actually... Each one had at least one aspect that surpassed Pokemon in some way. But they missed out on the essentials. You know, there's certain things to Pokemon's makeup that you have to have in a clone that these games they skipped at least one right so uh, let's just break down what I think are the essentials to Pokemon one obviously well the whole concept of capturing monsters goes without saying but let's just say I think evolution is pretty essential you kind of have to have evolution because that's the idea of like your pet growing with you right that's a sense of progression and it's cool I mean it's really cool like it's like, you know, raising your dog from a puppy to an adult, except, you know, a lot cooler, you know, but it's badass, it's awesome, it, it makes you more attached to your Pokemon, it, it's just, it's very important. I also think type combinations, like weaknesses, resistances, that's pretty important to the combat. That little memorization, like knowing that as a kid, it just gives you enough of an edge to beat your friends, you know, you, you could exploit things they didn't memorize, and it tied into, like, watching the anime, because they could teach you the shit, or, you know, just obviously experimentation in the games. I just, I always liked that design. That, honestly, that's about it, though. Like, I think you could probably throw every other aspect of Pokemon in the trash. You know, people will probably debate that with me, but I, I honestly think this is for a competitor. Fixing Pokemon, that'd be its own video, really. But for a competitor, you just need to rip off those aspects, and then, and you know, put your own twist on it, hopefully. And then every other aspect of the game can be wholly original. You know, your own thing, your own universe, your own story, hopefully an actual story. That would be a great improvement on Pokemon, just have a storyline. But anyway, so here, let's just dive right into these competitors. I'm probably going to end up recommending a few of these because I actually really enjoy a couple of them, even if they do miss out on some of the important aspects of Pokemon. But essentially, here are the competitors. These are, you know, I'm probably missing one or two, but these are really all of the big ones over the years. Uh, first, Monster Rancher. Monster Rancher, I think, was a really interesting concept that just doesn't really work anymore, but you could adapt it to modern day, I'm sure, in some way, I don't know. Uh, I'm not really going to think it through too much. I, in a way, 
Invisimals and later Pokemon Go kind of slightly took the concept and improved on it. But basically how Monster Rancher worked was you took a CD, you put it in your computer or PS1 or whatever you had it on. It would read the CD and you would get a monster, right? You know, however it read like some data in there, it would give you a monster. And you would raise your monster in like a training simulation type of thing. Like it would run drills. Like uh, it would be like strength training, agility training, all that type of shit. You would feed the monster and then you would take it to competitions and they would be one on one. And like I said, I really like that concept. The problem is that it just seems very repetitive and kind of just too slow paced for the level of repetition. And also the combat is just, it's too hands off. Like it's way too automated. Essentially, even it's, you know, it's real time combat and you do select all of your monsters moves. The problem is, is that the monster won't always listen to you. Hit percentage is based on like how much of like the guts stat that you have, which is essentially stamina. So you'll spend like if you miss too many times, which is gonna probably fucking happen, you're gonna wait for like a full 30 seconds to have another good chance of hitting the po uh, the enemy with certain moves. Like it's just it's way too slow paced. It seems too luck based. Uh, I don't know, like, the monster generation thing is just too random. I don't know, it's a really cool idea, and I want to see a modern implementation of it. But, it failed because it, it, it's, just, it's just not really Pokemon. Also, the monster designs are of extremely mixed bag. Like, there is not, and there is no, like, artistic cohesion whatsoever. Like, one monster will be, like, a wolf, a blue wolf. And another monster will be, like, a like a cyclops dude with like a little tentacle thing that he hops on and like another monster will be like a fucking like watermelon like a, a brick a, a tall brick with like a watermelon texture it's like what the fuck <laughs> what are these monsters like you have these goop dudes one dude looks like fucking <laughs> if you watch germa you'll know beanbag sonic and that's the perfect description. It's a fucking blue blob with like arms that come out. <laughs> it just, oh my god, this fucking thing. <laughs> he dabs. Oh my god, it fucking dabs in the 90s. It's ahead of its time, clearly. But anyway, it's a good game. It hasn't really aged that well though. So next we have the Digimon World games. I've only played two of them. I played Digimon World 2, which is shit. It's utter shit. I remember playing it as a kid and liking it and then I, I guess I didn't get that far though because I remember playing it on an emulator years later and being like wow this is a giant piece of shit it's actually so bad it, I don't it's not worth describing why but Digimon World Dawn and Dusk those are good games those are legitimately good games now if you like Digimon you already know the monster design is going to be good because fuck, it's Digimon. Like, Digimon actually always had great designs. And the great thing about Dusk and Dawn is that it kind of throws out the whole show thing where um, Digivolution was temporary, right? You know, and that, you know, they would revert back to their rookie form after the battle or whatever. Uh, in the game, Evolution, like, Digivolution is sort of permanent. I mean, I say sort of because you can actually revert forms still. But the biggest problem with the game, it's turn-based, it's 3v3 combat, which is great. Like, I think 3v3 is the direction... Pokemon either needs to go 2v2 or 3v3 permanent, because Pokemon XD and Coliseum, they did 2v2 for all their battles, and it was great. It was a lot more... It felt a lot more strategic and involved. I mean, maybe it was an illusion, but it just it felt more satisfying to 1v1 than 1v1 to me. So, um, every battle's 3v3 which is great. Uh, I don't think it really did type weaknesses or anything. It, it, it probably did to a minor degree, but it wasn't really that significant. The, big prob the biggest problem with the game is that evolution, how they implemented evolution is fucking garbage. All right, so every time you evolve, you reset back to level one. So even though your general stats have increased, they decrease overall because you go from like level 30 Agumon 
to level one Greymon. You know what I mean? So, sure, he'll get back up to like level 15 really fast in a couple battles. But it really gets old. It really fucking gets old. And here's the thing. Here's the problem, too. So if you remember in the show, a Pokemon could ditch evolve into... Uh, Pokemon. A Digimon could ditch evolve into, like, different monsters in certain situations. Like, there was that one episode where, um... Greymon instead ditch evolved into Skull Greymon, I think. And you can turn into Skull Greymon in the game. The problem is... You ha you perp you actually have to um, de ditch evolve or however that term is whatever the fuck you're supposed to say de ditch evolve back into Agumon to to unlock that new evolution is incredibly fucking annoying. It was so annoying because here's the oh yeah now I remember how it worked. So every time that you ditch evolve, you unlock a new max level. Like, the standard max level was only like 20, right? But you ditch evolve, it goes up to 23. And then when you revert, it goes up by another, you know, amount. So to unlock Skull Greymon, you would have to, you know, ditch evolve to Greymon, revert back to Agumon, and then ditch evolve again. And then for even like some certain hidden ditch evolutions, you'd have to do that like three or four fucking times, even with like ultimate forms. Like, you'd have to revert from Metal Greymon all the way back to Agumon. It was it was a terrible system. A terrible system that I, like dragged down an otherwise great game. Also, I think the universe kind of sucks too. Like it's like the whole digital world thing just wasn't implemented in a very interesting way in the game. But I think everything else about it was good. It was a pretty good game actually. Um, then we have Dragon Quest Monsters. So Dragon Quest is not very popular in the West. Probably because it's kind of generic, but I, I, I think the games are goofy and they have good characters. They're not taken too seriously. They're fun. I like Dragon Quest. And Dragon Quest, like, if you like the enemies in Dragon Quest, you know, drawn by Akira Toriyama. All the designs are done by Akira Toriyama. So that that's great. That's awesome. You know, obviously I like Dragon Ball like everybody else. So, uh, Dragon Quest Monsters, you, you know... You capture and train those monsters. I mean, you don't really capture them. You recruit them by a display of strength, which is a weird system, but kind of cool, I guess. Um, but the problem, the problem with Dragon Quest Monsters, and this is a huge fucking problem, is that it has evolution, right? Except it's not evolution. You combine two monsters to make a new monster. That would never work for Pokemon. That would never ever work for Pokemon. Imagine you have your pets, like you have your fucking, you have like, you have your generic ass house cat and your German Shepherd that you love, you love your, your pets, and you have to fucking fuse them together to make a new super pet. I, see, that's the problem, like you can't get attached to your monsters and Dragon Quest monsters because you're just gonna like fuse them like in your DNA chamber or what i don't even fucking know how it works but yeah you you combine your your pokemon into a new stronger pokemon yeah yeah that's a serious flaw also another thing that's a serious flaw and i i think it's a great game don't get me wrong because what what dragon quest monsters joker 2 specifically has because the joker games are the good ones of the dragon quest monsters joker 2 implemented a size based system and this is what I think the solution is to legendaries in Pokemon. Since legendaries kind of, uh, I, I think honestly they've always been implemented kind of shitty in the games. Uh, again, that, that, maybe that could go in its own video. But what Dragon Quest Monsters Joker 2 did is every, like, you had three size slots in your party, right? And but technically you had six, like, three in a reserve, you know? So, you would have normal monsters would take up one slot. They would have large monsters that uh, they automatically did like 50% more damage. Uh, they would have usually would have about 50% more health, and they could have a broader range of skills. Like you, in a sense, everything's based on fusion. Everything inherits the skills of their parents, right? And they also have their own skill that that monster has, like their own skill trees that you invest skill points into as they level up, right? 
So large monsters could have four skill trees instead of three, right? And then, then, this is the best part, they had giant monsters. And when I mean giant, they're fucking huge. I love, I love that. It was awesome. What giant monsters, so they obviously took up all three slots, so you could only have a giant monster fight versus, you know, three normal sized monsters. Giant monsters, their basic attacks hit the entire enemy team. And they do like double damage of a normal monster. They have like double the health. It's awesome. Like it's seeing like your giant fucking cyborg. Well, I guess your giant android centaur shoot like arrows everywhere. Like your fucking huge chimera thing or your like giant fucking moose. Your moose of doom. Seeing that stuff is awesome, especially if you're a Dragon Quest fan. You can get all of the final bosses from from the main games as monsters. Now, the problem with Dragon Quest monsters, other than that, is that you kind of have to play the game with a wiki open, because all of the late game monsters come from specific fusions. And even worse than just combining two specific monsters, they actually have a grandfathering system where you have to fuse two. You have to fuse. Uh, you know, four unrelated monsters, but not together at once. You fuse one as a group of two, another as a group of two, to just any random monster, and then you fuse those two random monsters to make, like, the super ultimate powerful monsters. It's just a bad system. They should have just had, like, a quad fusion or something. Because there's no way playing the game naturally you would ever figure it out. It's stupid. It's a bad system. It's, it's really bad. But I think it's a really fun game, and it's the most fun Pokemon alternative I've ever played, even if it doesn't give you that same sense of, like, bonding with a fictional animal <laughs> that can kill things or whatever. And then we had Invisimals on PSP. I actually kind of liked Invisimals. Like, Invisimals was too simplistic. I don't even need to go over the combat, really. It was super simple. But it had cool monsters. Which, that's like the most important thing, really, to a Pokemon game. Uh, it, it had, it, so it had augmented reality features, right? I mean, this was pretty early stuff. I mean, we're talking like 2006, 2007 AR, you know? So, you had this little plastic card. You had a camera that you attached to the top of your PSP. And you basically just wander around your house or outside and try and find monsters. I mean, it was the precursor... To Pokemon Go. It was so ahead of its time with this shit. It, it's, it's crazy how it basically predicted all these mobile games, you know, on, on smartphones and shit. But it really, it was just, it was very simplistic. But I think it, it was fun. It was fun. I, I liked it. I think it's just worth a mention for that. I wouldn't say it's necessarily worth playing today, but back in the day, I liked it. So, I don't know. It failed, I guess, just because of its simplicity. I mean, you couldn't really battle with your friends. I think you could, but it's like, the combat, I'll have to, I'll probably show some on screen, because I don't remember exactly how it worked, but it was basic. It was so basic. There was not really any competitive value to it. All right, now, Yo-Kai Watch. Yo-Kai Watch was actually made quite a splash, I remember back when it finally came to the States, to the West, really, in general, not just the States, but... When it came to the Western world, like, that was, like, the new hit thing for kids for a while, you know? And it actually sort of captured some of the spirit of Pokemon. But I, you know, I didn't care, you know? I mean, by the time it came out, I'm not sure. I'll have to look up how old I was, but I was definitely at least a teenager, if not 18 already, Jesus. But, so, yeah, like, I, I didn't know pretty much anything about Yo-Kai Watch other than you essentially capture evil ghosts. And that there was a TV show. And a TV show, that's that's always good. I mean, that's probably a huge part of why Pokemon became so popular. Uh, now that I've finally seen some gameplay, uh, it, it kind of sucks, actually. Like, the monster designs are pretty alright. Like, I think it works for the aesthetic they were going for. I wouldn't want it in Pokemon, but at least the monsters are memorable enough. They're, they're cutesy. Um... Uh, it even ha it does have evolution. That's another thing too. They they got evolution right, but the combat. What the fuck, man? The combat is like it reminds me of those auto battlers on 
on mobile that are really shit. Because, like, essentially your monsters just fight automatically, but you can pick skills, and then they have, like, ultimate moves and stuff. And it had, like, this gimmicky mechanic where you could, like, remove status effects with the touch screen. It, uh, no, keep that shit out of my games, you know? Like, I could shit on Pokemon for its lack of competitiveness, even though it has... The thing about Pokemon is it actually has... Pokemon actually is competitive to a degree, you know? Like, everyone knows about Smogon. Everyone knows fucking they have these like world championships and shit or whatever <laughs> the nature of the competition ever from based on everything i've seen and what dominant strategies there are in team composition is that the problem with pokemon is just the stats in general i mean one hit kills being a standard is not a good standard for a turn-based strat like any turn-based game like killing something in one hit should be like a grand like exploit thing you build up to like sweepers that's a common strategy in pokemon and and then on the other end of the scale you have the tanks they're like fucking invincible you just turtle up as much as possible and baton pass is just a bad like immersion breaking move like it makes no fucking sense how do you pass over stat buffs to another pokemon like whatever fuck it I'm mumbling about things that are not important. Back to these these games. So Yokai Watch, I don't know. It, maybe it's worth a try. It looked too kiddy to me. There was too much story too. Like just, I think a big part of the appeal of the old Pokemon games that they've lost their way, especially in fucking Sun Moon, which had like an hour tutorial, is that you're like running off and exploring the world, even though it's a linear game, you're still like off the leash the whole time. You know, you're not handheld throughout the entire fucking game. And even though I like Gen 5, Gen 5 is what started it. There were f so many moments in Gen 5 where you just stopped and you have to talk to your friends or like a gym leader or something. It's like, just let me fucking play the game, dude. Just let me play the fucking game. It's not like there's a story anyway. If there was a real story, I'd read every fucking line of dialogue. There, But Pokemon games don't have story. There's no fucking story. So you're just reading stupid, pointless shit the whole time. Anyway, so then we have Monster Hunter stories. I was greatly disappointed by this game. I'm like Monster Hunter fans are gonna be pissed off at me, but I like Monster Hunter. I'm a I'm a casual fan of Monster Hunter. I started with Monster Hunter Three Ultimate, played it for like I don't know 130 hours I think. I, I made it to G rank, uh, then kind of quit because it just really wasn't that fun anymore. G rank, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, <laughs> Which, you know, if I ever make a video on Monster Hunter World, uh, you're probably going to hear me say some similar things about Iceborne. But, uh, you know, I skipped four in Generations, played World, loved World, fucking put, you know, 300 to 400 hours into the base game of World, like, fucking farmed so long for decorations. Uh, I'm a Charge Blade main. <laughs> you know, judge me based on that, I suppose. But... <laughs> Uh, I played, I still played, like, uh, over 100 hours of Iceborne, was disappointed by certain aspects of it, but I just, I loved all the new monsters, and old monsters, really, actually, because I, uh, you know, I, I might be kind of a basic bitch with my Monster Hunter taste, but Brocky Dios and Zenogar are by far, like, my two favorites, and then I, I think Glavinus is probably, like, my third favorite, but I just think, uh, fucking, Brocky Dios and Zenogar just... Uh, amazing designs which ties into monster hunter stories because all the monsters are the monsters from monster hunter so th the monster design is like you know it's top notch but the problem is is there's no evolution you know you're essentially fighting with baby monsters and so i think the two biggest problem with monster hunter stories is that it's tied into the monster hunter universe i think they should have used Monster Hunter as like a base point and then built off of that. So, because of it being tied into Monster Hunter, uni like the universe, there's almost no trainer battles in the game. Every battle is like a wild battle or a boss battle, right? And the only way to capture Pokemon is to go into monster dens, which are like these randomly generated mini dungeons. 
and just grabbing an egg and having a Wikipedia page open in your lap and just be like, oh, is that egg pattern, uh, is that a fucking... I hope that's not a fucking Velocidrome. I, I wanna, you know, uh, why are the mo Fuck, I haven't played Mod Star in a while. The, the names are slipping me. But it's like, you know, I want a Berioth. I don't want a fucking, uh, Zamtrios. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's shit like that. And I played about two th So, the other major problem with the game, and this is the biggest fucking problem, is the combat system is shit. It's, it's shit. I don't care what you say, it's shit. If you're a Monster Hunter fan, I get it, okay? That is the worst turn-based combat system I think I've ever seen. It's basically rock, paper, scissors. Like, it is, you know, people say Pokemon's combat is kind of rock, paper, scissors with the type weaknesses. This is literal fucking rock, paper, scissors. Because, basically, you have three basic attacks. Power, speed, and te technique, or uh, whatever it's called. I think it's technique. Uh, and, basically, um, power beats technique, technique beats speed, speed beats power, right? And so, already you can see the huge fucking problem with this. Now, it's not completely random. Basically, wild monsters have very simple AI that will favor... A certain type of attack over another type of attack plus every monster has special skills that are always one type like um, let's say Rathalos's like main attack like it's like fireball attack is a technique attack right so if you know that you're fighting a Rathalos and it, it will most likely use a technique attack over a normal attack then you'll use a power attack to counter the fireballs so that you take less damage. So there is a bit of strategy. But god damn it if it doesn't feel like it's fucking random. It feels like it's random the whole time, man. It's so... It's painful. I played all the way to the part in the game where you finally can, like, recruit high rank monsters. So I could finally get some cool shit, like, you know, Nargakuga or Zenogre or whatever, you know, like, eh, the cool monsters. And I just, I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't bring myself to do it. And as someone, you know, since I never played 4, I got to recruit, like, a, some cool monsters and never got to fight. Like, like I mentioned before, Zamtrios or uh, Basarios, Gravios, you know, monsters like that. That's cool. And, like, getting, like, Tigrex, you know, Tigrex is pretty iconic, having him on your team, that's cool. It's like, the combat's so bad, it ruins the whole game. That's, that's the short, short version of what I'm saying. The combat ruins the fucking game. It's, it's bad. But there's a lot of potential there. If you can stand the rock, paper, scissors, give it a try, because I think the rest of the game is pretty good. There's even kind of a story. <sighs> okay, so finally, the most recent one, Temtem. Uh, it's an early access game, so I'm not going to comment on like how it plays, because I refuse to play it, and I refuse to support it in really any way till it's released. But I will say, based on what I've seen from trailers and a little bit of gameplay here and there, um, the monster design suck, and that's pretty fucking important. Like, like I said, that's kind of, that's the first thing you need to get right. If you're, if you're like a game developer, well, you're not watching me, but let's say if you were watching me and you're a game developer, you need the best artists that you can hire, like with the best, like, art style, you know, for cutesy Pokemon that evolve into, like, cooler Pokemon type of shit. You need to get that right first, because really, it's not the only thing that's important. I think Monster Hunter proves, Monster Hunter Stories proves that, that you still need to get the combat somewhat right to make a good game. But, but the monster design, that's the most important thing, and Temtem fucked it up. It, it, I'm, I know it's subjective, it's highly subjective, but I don't know, dude, just look at these, judge for yourself. I think some of these are okay. But most of them remind me of, like, DeviantArt Fakemon, you know? It, some of them fucking make Gen 8 look good. Okay, that's that's an exaggeration. Nothing makes Gen 8 look good. But some are, you know, worse than Gen 8 designs. And that's pretty fucking impressive, I'd say. In, in the worst way possible. So, yeah, Temtem, whatever. Maybe when it releases, it'll become a good game. It's an MMO. That's, that's interesting. But other than that, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it'll turn out to be good. That's, this is like an in-progress situation. I doubt it, though. 
I don't, Pokemon MMO has always been an idea that's been thrown around. Like, that's one of the popular dream game type of things people like to do. And I think it's interesting, I just, I'm not sure how it would work. I, I would like to see it tried. I, I would. Better than Temtem. Or, you know, maybe Temtem will turn out to be good in the end. Who knows? So really, honestly, if I were to make a competitor, because fuck fixing Pokemon, I don't even care. Uh, if I were to make a competitor, I think they gotta ditch 1v1 combat. That's that's really my main suggestion. 2v2 or 3v3. You gotta go with those. It's more strategy. I mean, it can be more strategic. If Assuming you build the combat system to be complex. That, that would be my first suggestion. My second suggestion, this one... Um, is a bit more loose, I would say. Is that they need, they def like I said, they need to keep type weaknesses and strengths, right? But, I think instead of double damage, they should reduce that to like maybe 33% or 50% or something and add status effects and debuffs to that. Or like some kind of, some kind of extra buff to yourself, to your own Pokemon. Like, it make it unique for every type. So that's something that you have to memorize that also adds a different layer of strategy to it. Because, for example, like with a multi-type Pokemon, like if your Pokemon or your opponent's Pokemon are double-typed, that's a, a wider range of like debuffs, buffs, like all these different effects that you would have to account for every time that you attack. Now obviously you'd probably, and maybe you could even make it if you attacked a Pokemon that was resisted, like resistant to that type, you would get debuffed, or they would get buffed. You know what I mean? So it would just add this other layer. And obviously, the new combat system, if if switching Pokemon would stay in, which I think it would, yeah. Maybe even make it more costly, and make it cost two of your Pokemon's turns instead of one for like a 3v3 or something. Um, oh, obviously you would make it still skip your turn no matter what. And, and when a Pokemon faints, you wouldn't get an opportunity to switch for free. I can't believe, see that's how you know, that's when Pokemon first started getting easier, because if I remember right, Gen 1 didn't have this. But you know, every time you KO a Pokemon, it's, they ask you if you want to switch, and what Pokemon your t opponent's going to switch to. Of course the game's going to be piss easy, because you're just going to fucking switch to whatever they're weak to instantly at no consequence. You know, obviously in options you can change that, and every, you know, the. The last few times I did play Pokemon, I swapped that because that's really just how it should work anyway. That's how it works in actual PvP, like against a real person. So, I think Pokemon needs to be more challenging. I, I really do. Not super mega challenging, assuming you still want a child audience. But you could totally get away with making it harder than Gen 1, but not in a grindy way. Because Gen 1 is kind of hard in a grindy way. If you were always the same level as your opponent, you would never struggle. You would never struggle in Gen 1, ever. And you can say that the whole series. This competitor that I keep calling Pokemon needs to be more challenging. And honestly, that's about it for my suggestions. Like, I think really I would just like to see how people get creative, to be honest. like. I don't, I never really pictured my dream alternative to Pokemon in my head because I really, I would take anything that captures these, these important aspects of Pokemon, you know? Like anything that takes those few core ideas and then just builds everything original around those ideas that they stole, I think would be the perfect game. Unfortunately, I don't think it exists yet, you know, maybe someday it will. And like I said, I think this is the perfect opportunity because Pokemon is at its weakest right now. People are pissed off at the Pokemon Company, Game Freak, and they're pissed off at Nintendo too, which is misguided because Nintendo honestly doesn't really have much to do with Pokemon anymore. And actually, I don't think they have for a very long time. But honestly, yeah, I just I want to see a good alternative. And until then, if you're looking for an alternative, all I can do is share with you my experience. I think Dragon Quest Monsters Joker 2 and Digimon World Dusk and Dawn are your best bets. If you haven't played those, give them a shot. Especially, like, if you're a Digimon fan, dude, Digimon World Dawn and Dusk will be right up your alley. I, I promise you, you'll have a great time because it's just, it's Pokemon, but it's Digimon. You know, isn't that great? Like, I, I think, I think it's great, personally. 
For Dragon Quest Monsters Joker 2, you'll have to get used to the whole fusing monster thing, but I think um, it, the combat is probably the most interesting out of all of these Pokemon clones, because essentially, it, it actually has like, um, there are actually downsides to giving your uh, monsters orders versus letting them fight on their own, because like some monsters can attack multiple times in a turn, but if you give them an order, like tell them to use a specific move, they can only attack once. So there's certain like trade-offs to that, right? But you can also alter like their tactics so that they'll probably choose the right move. Which, you know, some people don't really like that and, you know, eh, it's probably not the best mechanic in the world, but it is kind of interesting, it's refreshing, at least. I just, I like 3v3 combat. I think it works great. And both Digimon and Monster and Dragon Quest Monsters have that. If you played those, I guess uh, give Monster Hunter Stories a try. Um, I don't know. You probably won't like the combat. Maybe you'll be fine with it. Who knows? It's definitely, it's probably got the greatest monster design that you know, that's not Pokemon, or at least you know I uh, maybe about tied with Digimon. Uh, they're very, they're both very good. And outside of that, I don't know. Maybe Monster Rancher. Monster Rancher might be worth trying just to. Just to see how the CD shit used to work. If you, but <laughs> if you don't have CDs lying around, uh, you might be a shit out of luck. Though I think Monster Rancher 4 took DVDs, so probably more of you have DVDs lying around. Um, other than that, nah, the rest of these aren't really worth playing. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, <laughs> you decide, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I had to slap the uh, essentially. This is a lower effort video that I had to slap together because I'm going to be away from my computer for a week. Not entirely sure if I'm still going to make the Spongebob video, though by the time this releases I'll have decided and, you know, maybe be finishing that up. Um, Ghost of Tsushima will come out the week after this releases, so I will definitely cover that, obviously because so many fucking people watched my Last of Us review. I, you know, I never thought that would happen. That's, that's crazy to me. So, yeah, I'll cover Ghost of Tsushima. Hopefully, it's good. I hope it's good, because I still like Sucker Punch. Even though Infamous Second Son wasn't, like, amazing or anything, it was still pretty good. It's still pretty good. So, hopefully, they still have that talent. Yeah, that's about it. I don't know. Tell me in the comments below, you know, if you want to hear me talk about any other industry shit. Uh, might talk about Cyberpunk in the future, just because... It's the last great game coming out this generation. At least I hope it's great. You know, please, please be good. <laughs> so, um, you know, I want to, I'll just see if there's something interesting to talk about with it. I might wait until there's more news because I still want to see more gameplay. Jesus. The last gameplay reveal, there needs to be more fucking gameplay. Just show me some shooting for, for five minutes. Just for five minutes, show me some standard gameplay. That's all That's all I'm asking for. The writing is clearly good, you know, the cutscenes and animation are clearly good. I just want to see gameplay. That's it. Uh, other than that, you know, you know, thanks for watching. Like if you like the video. Subscribe. All that shit. You know. See you next time, guys.